Okay, it seems like, oops, um, it seems like um, something is not going correct here today. Um, Say Dal Vivo. Okay, it says that I'm right now, I'm live here. I don't know, now I cannot rotate my cell phone anymore. A little slightly stressed today since the whole thing doesn't work. And now I have my cell phone straight up like this. I'm very sorry about this. I was not able to do it, but it seems that I'm now online. So I have to put my computer here so then I can read the messages you're writing. I'm very sorry about um, that it took so long. I don't know what's the problem. It didn't work. It didn't show me that it was working, but right now we're online and that's all fine. I don't know how it was and how it worked. I had all technical problems you can imagine. And so today we are like this. I'm very sorry for this, this transmission here was I'm not able anymore to turn it. Um, we had also the Vodafone assistance today and we got the new modem. So that was not really my fault. It was even the cable uh, in the house was uh, burned and also then later on also the modem. And I still am chatting with the guy and he's telling me that he's still working on the line. So probably sometimes it doesn't work on the computer, but now let's we realize to, pro to solve this problem. Okay. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about the bridge and I thought that I will talk in the beginning, I will tell you a little bit generally speaking about the bridge. I'm happy that we're up like this so I can talk how the bridge should stand instead of being so wide and we don't need all this space, right? And then I can hug you, you know, <laughs> like this. Um, so I will just very quick uh, do my my introduction uh, introduction, and then I saw already a, a lot of nice questions actually, and didn't uh, you were very brave actually, and so I think we can, uh, um, uh, and then we can go through these things, and it all together gives a nice picture of how the whole thing should be. Now. As a beginning, one of the major um, issues actually on the violin is that you have on one side the violin or the viola or the cello, double bass, everything very stable. And uh, then you have the strings on top of it. And by tuning, let's say the violin with the pegs, you tune them always in one direction mainly, except the E string with a, with a fine tuner. And so the bridge is is like let's say warping, warping, okay? It's a little bit like um, if we take here, this one is, doesn't look that nice. I will take a, a, a different piece where I make now a bridge out of it. And then I can tell you how the bridge is warping, okay? So we will make it a little bit like this is, let's say our bridge. And uh, then I shouldn't show you how I was good in, in making even things to smoke here, but this is fine. This is, let's say, the bridge. Actually, to be a little bit more better, it should be a little bit like this, actually, like this. It looks here like this and then like that. This is from the side view of a bridge and where it is inclined like this, this is direction where the fingerboard comes, okay? And by tuning towards the fingerboard, this part then is turning, turning. And if it is pretty stable, there's so much power that the whole thing starts to turn like this. So you have, or you have a bridge which is completely turning towards where you're tuning or only one part or even everything. Sometimes the whole bridge is really banded and sometimes you see it so strong like this that you just say, how is it possible that it is not cracking here? Even the paper started to crack already. And this is because wood is extremely um, elastic, okay? But if you would take a new bridge and you would bend it like this, it will immediately break. So, one of the first advices is 
don't try to get your bridge now from one moment to another within 10 seconds to get it in the perfect position, okay? So if it's warped, violent makers would take off the bridge, and then they put it on a small jar of water boiling, and it gets like steamed the whole bridge, and then they take it off and they put it on a place of wood with a clamp overnight or two days like this, and then they get it back like this, okay? But you are now a musician, you are at home. If you would take off the bridge, you are risking that the sound post is even falling down. And then you only don't have only the problem with the bridge, but also with the sound post. And then you have to wait another week, what you can do, how you can put up your sound post in a few weeks if you're still locked here. Otherwise, I'm working already and I don't. Um, so the best advice is don't try to do it within one time. But... Just, it's a something, every time you're tuning, actually, the best advice that you always double check your instrument from the side, from the side view, like this. I'm glad that we have it like this, okay. This, you, I hope you can understand that this is a violin, so a, a viola from the side, these are the F holes, and here's the bridge, okay. And you just try to, if it's too much into the front, that you bend it a little bit, Backwise, by taking your instruments on your lap, put the scroll on the table, and with these two hands, you just do a little bit. Don't try to pull everything, you know. Make one side and another side, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Look if it is already better, and then just leave it. Play a little bit, and maybe before you're putting away the instrument, you pull another little bit. And every day, you're checking a little bit. After moving this bridge, I made also some some videos uh, on the very beginning. I even lift every single string because you have to think that the string is with uh, uh, something rounded and around. And if, if something is scratching here, then all this string is getting too much tensions and you're you're risking to to on the long term to destroy your string. Okay. So after tuning and after pushing you the your bridge in the right position you lift a little bit every single string. The E string, you don't have to do that. The other three strings, very good. On the cello, is too difficult, too high, you're just risking. Even on the cello, I'm pushing the instrument, the, 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 the bridge in the right position, but I keep the cello straight up, and then I, I, I keep it like this, and then here with my hand like this, I take the bridge here, I the neck here, and then I push it just a little bit and then I double check, okay? So you, I'm standing straight up by doing this. Violin and viola, I do it sitting, okay? On a double bass, it's it's uh, the best thing to lay down the double bass, okay? And then with two hands for every part with a lot of uh, power, but just try to keep your, your power always under control not that you're just boom and then the whole thing is slapping down this would be the worst case and you certainly don't want that okay you want to, to get out of your problem in a better solution and not in a worse solution um so the whole thing is actually caused mainly because of tuning mainly then certainly there are also some other uh, reasons that it's it's, it's uh, bending or not standing. I wrote or I read already all these comments, and somebody is telling that it's always slapping down, cutting. It could also be that it's so badly cut that the feet don't really touch the top, and it's not a flat area which should touch stable on the top, but it's a little bit. Uh, round, so it's it's even the feet how they are made are inviting that it is slapping down and, and cut and falling down. So the best thing is before you just pull it up again, just double check your feet with a low light and check if the surface is straight or if it's already round. If it's round, then you have to take a little bit of this mountain away. Hmm? If you're not a maker, it's really getting difficult. And I certainly I'm not a fan of putting sandpaper on the top of an instrument and then adjusting the feet like this. 
I, I actually, I would say it's, it's rather a sign that you are not a violin maker. It, it can't be something great. But we are here in the worst case scenario and you have to somehow get out of your problems, right? So then in, in your case, you are not a violin maker and you don't pretend that you are a violin maker. So then from my side, this would be one solution for you if you have a quite a fine sandpaper that you try to put the sandpaper on the violin top and then you try to move the bridge in the idle position without going back and forth and then going back and forth. But this is nothing to do seriously, okay? This is it's, it's, it's like... A, cartoon of 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 uh, of of, of uh, violin adjusting but it's it's just weird he trying to to find a solution for this uh one i forgot the name who was it who, who told me that it's always um, falling his his bridge but uh, uh chris choice so chris you have my uh, my permit that you can do it this way okay because very likely your feet, your bridge was falling off so often that it even turned to be consumed in that area, okay? But certainly, another comment was, how can I see if my bridge is well fitted? Certainly that the feet are perfectly touching the top on every single corner and edge of the feet. It's a little bit like your, your shoes or your, you know, imagine you have comfortable shoes you wouldn't go with high heels in the mountains right or on or or uh, free climbing on 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 a rocket uh, stone uh, ground yeah same thing if you want that your bridge is standing stable straight on the ground it has to be flat like great shoes like uh, sport shoes uh, running or something like this okay and same for the violin bridge Another thing which could be that it is not, uh, uh, which invites that the bridge is warping and, 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 and going back and forth and is not standing stable in its position, you can compare it like a human being. And uh, now just imagine that I'm, I'm glad that the camera is standing like this. So imagine that you put the table away. Um, you are standing like this. Now here you can see even my belly and everything, but it's a little bit like a bridge of a violin, okay? And now you would give me a little bit like a heel or something, then I would always go into the front, okay? Falling into the front. So if I'm now a violin bridge, I have to go back. So then the whole thing becomes a little bit like this, okay? Or the other way around that it gets like this. So it's all from the, from the feet which makes the problem, okay? And then certainly my back goes to the tailpiece and my belly goes to the fingerboard, okay? On a cello bridge, since we are tuning on the top side with the pegs and then fine tuning a lot with fine tuners and most cello players are playing, are tuning only with the fine tuners, you also have to be strong for one side and strong for the other. So... To go back to my sheet of paper, which was my bridge, this one here, on a cello bridge, I even when I cut my, 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 my cello bridge, I leave the feet quite strong as it should be, um, my 10.5 millimeters. No need to make it 12 like they make it in Cremona. But then compared to a violin bridge where I leave it quite straight here, not exactly, maybe a third of a millimeter I go inside, on a cello uh, fingerboard I, I, uh, 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 bridge, I even make it a little bit like this. You see this, that it's always also on this side. So then I try to center this from the thickness of the original bridge. Okay, so I have a little bit of arching in the back side and a little bit of a arching on the front side in order that I'm prepared for bending back side and bending forward, okay? But that still seems or, or could be that the bridge is going a little bit from one side and another. It's like to the E string, it's on one side and G, D and A string is going in the front. So one thing I always see a lot when I get instruments of musicians in, their hand, in my hand is that if you have now the violin, let's say it's just made like this, this here is now a violin seen from the front, right? 
And here you have the two F holes and the bridge is standing here in between. That it is, has to be 90 degrees to the center line. This is a very, very thin line I centered here. And to do that, I also made the video about it, that I, I put a small thin ruler or a, a, a piece of, of paper or something on the back side to the finger uh, of the bridge. And then I double check to the corners how far it is from the purfling away. And then I adjust a little bit this direction of how the bridge is standing. And this one is actually one of the most important things or most common things which is wrong when I double check instruments. Now here this is a, a, a drawing of myself and I, I exaggerated in making the bridge feet very big and large like it would be like two cello uh, double bass uh, bridge feet which are standing on the top. Uh, on the violin it, the proportions would be completely different but I wanted to show you there was also a comment here where should it stand should this be on the line exactly on the middle or one third and two third how I would do it now this depends a little bit on uh, on how you construct or how you uh, have the instrument made so let's say a uh, montagnana cello usually these notches in the uh, in the f holes they are shorter than on a stradivari so if it's on a montagnana then i even put it on the half usually i make it a third in the back side and two third in the front okay and i make all my instruments a little bit like like this so what actually counts are the proportions of the neck and the body. And if everything is perfect on a violin, a violin should be the next 13 centimeters, then to these notches, so this imaginary thin line here, it's 19.5, and to the back side of the bridge, 19.65, a little bit less. And in order, if you make it like this, and you make it, you cut the bridge 90 degrees to the surface to the back side, yeah, 90 degrees exactly, then you get exactly the right string length, okay, from 32.8. So it's all about the, the string length. So it's, it's, it's not easy to say generally how it should be. I can say it for you how I make it, and I make them all the same, but you have a different instrument, and so you have to measure and double check and where this note is and all this kind of thing. So at a certain point, you certainly need a maker or, or, or the ability to, to, to double check this, but then we're going too much into details. So let's say your bridge right now on your instrument is a little bit wrong. What can you do at home? And one of my things which I'm doing a lot is that I give small hits, pick, pick, pick on one side on the other. And at home, you can do that by just taking, uh, taking a, a coffee spoon, okay, uh, and a small teaspoon. And you just, it's all round, so you cannot really damage nothing. And you just use it as a hammer, is a, a strong word, you never use a hammer. I usually, I use a small metal ruler, and then I just tick, 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 and that's that's what I'm, I'm using. But if you have a coffee spoon, or a, a knife, a Nutella knife, which doesn't cut, then also you can just put it on the top of your instrument and then just slide, tick, tick, and then you can see. And, and you know, or don't do everything in one. Make a little bit, double check how it is standing, adjust it a little bit, things like this, okay? This is my advice how I would put it down. And so this is the 90 degree question. And certainly when you look along, if, if now an instrument is all perfect lined up like this, then you have an imaginary center line, which is uh, crucial for a great sounding instrument. And then you have 90 degrees to it, the sound post, other uh, than the bridge. And uh, the string length of a violin should be 32.8 centimeters. On a viola, certainly it's... it's uh, going up and down and it really depends on what size so probably if you have a certain size of viola you 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 can search uh, uh, the right measurements and then the right uh, string length of your viola on the internet i'm sure you will find it 
same for the cello 69 i think is pretty good 69 centimeters maybe slightly less 68.8 something like this and uh I line it all up and then certainly if everything is correct then you can also look along the flanks of the fingerboard but it's already uh, it, it doesn't have to be perfect like this okay this is just a very rough idea okay but it's uh, so this is all about this then certainly the the bridge is not glued so some people would love to see it really strong in one position while um, it is a, 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 a moving part, which is a little bit comparable to like the needle of an old gramophone, okay? And the, the bridge is this precious, important part, which makes the whole uh, sound vibrate and transmit. And so take care of it. And if you take care, it could last for 20 years and maybe even more if you take care and you you, um, uh, you watch out. And if you never look at it and you just tune, tune, and you wait until it's falling and it is warped extremely, and then it's a, then it's a short uh, uh, life uh, in front of it, okay? So now I'm, I, I think I, I just, Pass through my my things here, and now I will see your questions. Okay, Adel, hi Edgar, I want to ask about the cello bridge placement. I have a modern cello. Is it always should be in the middle or the measuring of the inside marks? So this is actually what I told you. I would say one third towards the tailpiece and two third of the thickness of the bridge to the to the fingerboard is is my standard. And is if the notches are on a violin, let's say from the upper part, from the upper part, I show you exactly from which upper part, from here where the neck goes into the body, up to here is 13 centimeters, 130 millimeters, and from that part down it should be 19.5, and then one third of the bridge backside of this line so it results 19.65 okay that's what i wanted i even designed it like this here you have it like to the where the neck gets into the body 19.5 to this notch on the inside okay and then the bridge feet is a one third in the back and if the bridge like here is 4.2 so i have a little bit less than 1.5 millimeters to this 19.5, so it's 16, 19.65, uh, okay? Um, this is this. Uh, hi, Edgar, I want to ask about choosing good quality violin bridge, and I want to now know, I can understand that the luthier fit the bridge on my violin properly. Okay, so the, probably the best, best thing is that if your violin maker says that a bridge, a new bridge costs, let's say, 200 or 150 dollars or euro, then you know that he's working in a, in, a, in a very good way. Or if you ask him, do you have options? So if you just say me, Edgar, can you cut me a bridge for 20 euros? I probably say I don't make it. Uh, if you tell me 50 euro and I say I can also make it for 200 and you understand why, so then there is the difference. But on a 50 euro bridge, it should already work. But it's not that you can make it within so short time the best uh, for this specific instrument. Because it's, it's, a, it's a big chapter and the bridge is able to adjust many mm, small mistakes of the whole instrument. And with that one, you can adjust it, okay? So if you want a certain bridge, I remember with Carl Becker in Chicago, his bridge was $280, and I can tell you it seems a lot of money, but I probably, if you know how it is done, you will understand that it was actually very cheap because it was, you got a new, a new instrument, okay? And it's always a question how much you're willing to spend for a good bridge in order that you get out the maximum of your instrument, but which doesn't mean that a bridge like this will stand without that you have to touch it okay remember it's it's always moving it depends on your on your tuning it depends on your strings you're using things like this okay 
Um, so when it comes to the, the quality of your uh, wood, it's certainly that the wood, you, 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 the idle wood for this, let's remember this gramophone, a small needle, which is taking the sound of the old um, uh, discs. It has to be light, but it has to be also very strong. So it has to be a, a maple, which is very compact, which is very fine grain, very little pores in the wood. It has to be sparkling and full with power to vibrate. So if you take these rough bridges and you can play with them, then automatically you will have one which you love more than another one. And as a violin maker, I'm choosing my bridge a little bit like this. It's not that I'm, I'm just, now I can tell you like this on a YouTube channel, take this bridge and it makes this sound. But you you are like a a, a, a memory and all your experience is in here and in here. And you make a specific model or you talk to a musician and he's telling about his sound he's wanting on here. Then I have my bridges and then I just have out of a pile of, of bridges, I have one, I think this is the one. And then ask me why, it, it's this experience, okay? But a good bridge is always, usually also a little bit more expensive. And for me, I, I only consider Aubert Deluxe and Aubert Lux and uh, Aubert for the very economic ones, but certainly also Despieu make very nice bridges. And uh, I like the wood treatment of, of the Despieu very much. And so they have two or three trees and I usually always take the, the best. It's, uh, I don't want to make too much troubles here. Um, and one more question is how different bridges can change the sound. Well, different bridges can change certainly the sound, but before a bridge is changing the sound, if you respect everything, how it should be a bridge, how it is fitted, the bridge, the size of the feet, where it is standing, the kind of arching, the thickness on the upper part, the curve and the, uh, how it is worked, probably your sound, your, your instrument is, is sounding already so great that uh, I doubt that we have to talk about the different uh, sounds of, of, of bridges. It's, it's what my experience is that too many people are making things just somehow and then they are talking about this wood and this one and when they start to talk about the, the, the kind of wood they use for the sound post and stuff like this, uh, it's just a sign that some other things were not being made good. A great violin is great for everybody. Mm -hmm. Even there are some different uh, characteristics, but the bridge is something I, I, I usually am very mm, conservative on this one and I go on the Albert and I don't need uh, new materials and all these kind of things, you know. Mm. When it comes to, yeah, I don't want to be too uh, blocking too much. At the time I was working with Karl Becker, I remember that people were showing up and showing him some fancy new things for sound adjusting and he was very critical about it and I couldn't understand. Now that I know how it should be, I can understand his point of view very much. Uh, Bosco, hi Edgar, good morning. Hope you are well. And um, by the way, I'm very happy that you're all here. 36 here are on, online. I'm great. I'm so disappointed that I didn't work better before, um, yesterday and today we're straight up, but the bridge is straight up. So they are straight up today. Like. Um, so, uh, good morning, you well, I've got a D string on a violin and it has no power. I got a new string and there is no difference. Is this a bridge problem? Wow, this, um, honestly, I cannot like this tell you, but if it's only this one string, I think it's not only a bridge issue. There, there are more questions here. Uh, it's, it's all a question of, uh, very likely, a question of, of how the whole thing is lined up, okay? Mm. If the A is not straying... And the G string is great. <laughs> this is a... This is a only the D string is really something, usually it always goes in a pair. It's or the A and the D together are weak or the D and the G string, but only this D string, there, there must be something. 
I cannot tell you, but it, it seems to me that the whole thing is not lined up. Where the four strings on the upper nut, the four strings on the bridge that has to be, uh, then certainly where the feet are here, the, the feet of the bridge, sound post, bass bar, and then uh, uh, there has to be something um, with how the whole thing is lined up. I would love to be able to see the instrument and do this, but this is something I cannot hear uh, really um, mm, tell you. Probably I would just by moving the bridge sideways and then uh, comp after I did this, I then and, and I found the right position and I would adjust also the sound post. But I guess you have to write me um, again regarding this. Write me by email. First move the bridge left and right find the right position and then try it with uh, to tell me what what's the, the the problem now with the sound and I will tell you how to move the sound post. Hmm? Chris, um, do you put the parchment uh, on a violin bridges? How affect the sound? I do like it uh, to, to put it on. Um, also very cute is if there's this small tiny piece of um, ebony underneath the e-spring inside but they usually I don't make it myself but I like it. It's 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 cute it's uh, it's a problem the string is definitely too thin the e string and so it's it has to work in a small one millimeter of, of wood can't resist against all this so it's in the beginning it goes in and then it's at a certain point it, it stays in that position but if you put the parchment then it's a little bit uh, more protected and it definitely helps uh, sometimes uh, I have the impression that it's, or, or, or let's say 90% of the strings, I have the impression that with the parchment on the E string, it sounds even better. This is my personal, maybe, maybe it's even psychological, you know, you just know that it is now resisting over the years and then you say it, it sounds better. I wouldn't use the parchment now for sound adjusting, okay? Maybe you get it, the the picture. Uh, I would rather, if I have a problem on a on a nice cello bridge and I see like a, that the the spring is going too much inside, then I um I, I cut out the wood which is too much uh, squeezed in and I refill it with new um, uh, wood and then I replace the string perfectly on it. Things like this. Seems to be strange, but uh, if a bridge is nicely done, it's worth doing it. And uh, so sometimes I do it like this, and sometimes in order if the curve from somebody is not perfect, then I put a parchment, on, and then sometimes you will hear a slightly difference. But I don't use the parchment for sound adjustment. Okay. Um, Zanzu, hi Edgar from Tokyo. Wow. Hello. In your opinion, what are you? Are the top three professional bridges for the violin? Well, I told you, Aubert, I think, is very good. And uh, Aubert Deluxe for a, a craftsman master made instrument is definitely a very good thing. And uh, and then uh, Despio, and then uh, well, there, there might be some other ones, you know, uh, other ones which uh, Schuster in Germany who cuts them by hand or or the guy, the guy from uh, from Germany, forgot his name now. But I don't know these bridges, and then I prefer I, I pre there's a lot of, of a nice Albert Deluxe. What do you need? Something else. But but certainly you know, I'm keep if if everything sounds great and nobody complains, all fine. Um. Islam, Magdi, these live streams are very helpful. Thank you. Hope you keep doing them after the pandemic is over. Well, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm doing my, my, I'm doing my best to, to do. I will keep it on, but it's, it takes a lot of time. You have to prepare yourself, and, uh, and then if, if everything doesn't work like this, uh, yesterday I was very stressed. I have to, exp I was so disappointed that I couldn't make it with the connection, you know. But uh, I will do my best, okay? Jekzel, great to see you hail and sound. What do you feel are the characteristics of maple that makes the best bridges? Yes, certainly. A good maple, you cannot take just one maple. You need a certain 
a maple for bridges and there's a completely different maple which you would not make an instrument out of it but it, you just use it for for the bridge uh, now in english my english is not so good that i can tell you exactly what i'm uh, uh, talking about but the wood is 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 different and you, when you look at it you also see that it's different you see all these dots and on one side and these stripes on the other it's it's just a, a certain cut and a certain uh, type of, of uh, maple which is uh, very good for this and it's not even so easy for, for the bridge makers to, to find it you know um, Chris I have a violin with a bridge which is constantly falling down and the damage and, and I told you about this already that you have to double check the feeds if they are not the feeds then just write me an email and then we'll find and before that a little bit of um, saliva and then you clean the the surface and you try to get all the grease and everything from that area down maybe you you polish the instruments once it fell down and uh now it's oily and uh, it's no good okay uh we all know these videos uh during the quarantine when you want to run in the kitchen that you put some oil on the floor and then you can uh, you don't want that for with your bridge of the violin okay um Horace Kiang, do you recommend incorporating ebony into the area under the east ring so that you don't need the parchment anymore? I think I, I agree and I, I love when I see it and I have to admit that I, 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 I just put the parchment because it's quicker. But on the parchment, just watch out not to use super glue or, you know, this instant glue this is no good just remember always put the parchment in your mouth chew the skin until it is nicely smooth it's a little bit gross if you have young musicians uh, watching you what you're doing and you put it in your mouth yeah, we don't want to take the violin anymore um you have to smoothen it somehow and then don't glue it with super glue the super glue glues very quick so you have not the time to adjust it in the right position this is one disadvantage and then the other one is that by the over the time the wood is moving the super glue is so stiff and hard and then at a certain point when it starts loosening it makes an ugly noise and sometimes it's this ugly noise comes from this parchment which has been glued by super glue i only use tight bond white glue for wood traditional one take this half an hour it's worth and keep it with the fingers on it that's fine you don't have to do anything and then you put slowly the string on it wait a little bit another hour before it is dried out and then give it a tune if you tune it immediately it goes too much into it immediately very good um Thibaut Jaber oops uh, where is Thibaut Jaber the bridge on my mother's violin is bent a bit like a Prinkles crisp exactly on the E string towards the tail press and on the G string toward the peg. I guess that's not normal, right? You are right. And so you start bending it now exactly on the on one side in one direction and another. And you will see if you do it too much, it bang, it goes back. So just do it a little bit and then wait next day. Next day a little bit and so on. And do everything every day a little bit. And once it is in a perfect position then just keep on double checking it okay this is my recommendation you don't need to replace the bridge if all the rest is fine especially now in quarantine just keep on playing keep on tuning don't be afraid to tune because you're warping your 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 pringles no your your bridge just keep on doing the violinist, hello, 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 violin, no problem about the positions, looks great. I'm very happy today for the violin bridge. We are straight up. Uh, so we'll have to make some differences here. Um, Horace Kiang, should I use both the parchment and the little plastic tube to make sure it can last long? Wow, no, you named it because I was waiting for that. The small little plastic tube is not made to... Um, um, is not like the parchment. The parchment is one reason, is in order that the string doesn't cut into the maple of the, into the bridge. And the 
the small plastic tube is for another physical problem which is facing every um, string and usually it is placed if this is the bridge looking from the side so then we have here the small um, tube now here comes the string this is the string okay and then the tube you just put it like this on top of it and usually I put it like a little bit on the front over the string and then the rest on the back side and it just avoids that the 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 plain string is vibrating too much and this too much uh, vibrating is causing a kind of a strange sound on only on the E string and that's why they give you this this um, uh, plastic tube and it's uh, on cellos they give also a, or even on the double bass sometimes they have a small rubber ring and they put it on top of, in order to damp a little bit just a little bit the string in order to take this in German they call it a small gill away okay but you certainly you can have the parchment plus the, the plastic tube some instruments amplify it and are more sensible for this some if you without plastic you, you don't miss it then just keep it away uh, always better to take it off immediately if you don't need it and that's fine Nika Ozzi hi Edgar hi Nika Kitanovic, hello Kitanovic, Rafael Strasse, hi Mr. Raus. I'm not Mr. Raus, I'm Mr. Rus, but it's so nice. Uh, Ayong, ciao Ayong, how are you doing? Huh? Anna Rieti, he's great here. Oliver Jocha, Grüße aus Irland. Bosco, I'll double check the A, the G is real good. Okay, okay. So if it's the now, if, if you tell me, I'll double check the A string, which means, well, you, you made a question uh, much before, that means in this case that you have to push your sound post towards the middle of your instrument. And to do so, for you at home, I would try to find a knife from uh, for spalming the Nutella on your morning bread. Um... I say Nutella because I'm in Italy, you know, but otherwise, yeah. Um, but I cannot eat Nutella because then I will go up like this. But and I can't breath anymore. But that's another problem. Um, now, if you want to move your sound post a little bit, then you just go into the F hole with a knife, and then you just make with this knife you give a like one two hips tick tick until you hear that you're just moving something, but you just want to move the on the upper side of the top the the sound post just a little bit more inside and immediately the the d and a string will become a little bit stronger okay tell me how this is going violin play violin violin play piano hello again can you tell more how strings after length can affect the sound. If we have standard one sixth length, how will it affect a bit longer or a bit shorter after length on violin? Thanks. Um, it will affect in a way that certainly if it is longer, uh, there is more vibrating and it is, should be a little bit more freer, but it also means that um, it is more sensible to get that you will have a, like a wolf tone. So that's why I sometimes I give this advice. If you have a wolf tone on your instrument, you could just move the tailpiece a little bit towards the tailpiece. But we are talking about half a millimeter, one millimeter. It should be around one sixth. And on a violin, you cannot make it so much shorter. Uh, a few years ago, people thought that the tailpiece should be as light as possible, which is also very true in one sense. But if you have a very light sound uh, tailpiece and then you also put some, uh, you don't put any um, uh, fine tuner or if you put one out of uh, titanium, at a certain point things become too light and then at a certain point you will hear that it doesn't sound that great anymore. 
And this is because um, it wouldn't be so difficult to make a violin without a tailpiece, right? Instead of the strings like this, you can, can make out of a metal uh, something which is just holding these four strings and go into one string around the end button. And then you don't have any weight anymore. And then you would discover how ugly your instrument is sounding. So in uh, i think january or february this year january probably or, or december something um, joe Curtin, i was working with him like 30 years ago something like this in an arbor um he wrote a very nice article about this matter that the tailpiece actually has his reason to have a certain weight or actually its own uh frequency of a very deep a okay so if this is not maintained or the frequency of the tailpiece is not around a very deep A, uh, you're going away from the violin sound and you don't certainly want that. Okay. Um, and so this is influencing. So you, you certainly you always want the maximum of every instrument. So one six is, is I would say, very good. And you will not discover to get a better sounding instrument if you make it longer, okay? Um, you're facing other problems at that point. Um, thanks for sharing your time, knowledge, and your humbleness. Well, I, you're welcome. I, I enjoy doing this. Uh, it's somehow life fulfilling and I don't have the imp impression that I'm here giving you my secrets but it certainly it could be a great help for many of you but to know everything it takes a life and you cannot with one video repeat it it would be certain, certainly very nice but on the other side I agree that a good student uh, should be better than his master so I'm um, all my students, I hope they will become much better. Otherwise, there would be no evolution, <laughs> right? Thank you for your videos, Rose. They are so helpful. Igor Barboza, you're welcome. Pin Lin Chu. Hi, Edgar. Since March, I watched almost every video from your channel. Thank you. Best regards from Nuremberg. Hey, das ist doch schön. I'm very happy that Pin Lin Chu is on my community tell your friends i'm very happy that we are more and more people here uh by the way i'm missing my workshop a lot you know yesterday i had to go to my apartment in which i have in close to cremona where there was a problem but i couldn't go to the workshop in downtown ah it was really hurting thank you so much sir good health and god bless you're welcome you too all the best. Cello Pera, dear Russ, what do you think about the Richard's cello bridge model? Richter's cello bridge model. Many people say that it improves projection even better than the Belgian bridge model. Here you just caught me. I don't know the Richter cello bridge model, okay? So I will immediately after this video double check. This is something which I'm very interested to. I could also imagine to change the cello bridge a little bit, especially sound is changing over the years since I started. It's now over 35 years that I'm making now instrument and things have changed. At the time, 35 years ago, we were fitting a French bridge mainly and now nobody wants any French bridge anymore. We're only using uh, uh, Belgian bridge, which is a little bit more um, quicker responding, a little bit more projecting. But uh, I, I believe that uh, it could be increased and that probably if it is how I would make it, I would make the, the feet a little bit longer and the upper part I would make compressed a little bit. So I would just go a little bit more up in order to be quicker. And this in combination with the neck, which is not so much inserted into the body, probably would help for nowadays sound uh, uh, impression, yeah? Hi, Edgar, greeting from Guatemala. Can you imagine how this whole thing is working? Guatemala, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know? Nice that you're here, Marco. Um, after finishing the cut work and fitting of the violin bridge, can uh, how can I dark a little the bridge for visual aesthetic? 
thanks for your time and knowledge. Um, I don't un understand that but what it means for how can I dark a little the. Um, um, I just the more you you work out um, the bridge uh, in some uh, areas, the better. It sounds. I think in 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 one uh, in number two, if you look, I had a paper with with a violin bridge. Um, this would be actually the right video. Maybe I, later on I, I I double check where it is and then I send you where you can see it. I explained it very nicely, so I don't want to take too much time on this. But um, uh, I, I in one of these live uh, transmissions here, I think it was number two. Where I had this or three, two or three, huh? I will uh, check. I, I will write you a comment on this comment later on. Okay. Daniel Roman, hello, hello. Saludos desde Puerto Rico. I have been in Puerto Rico already in the year 2000, and there was a varnish seminar, and I had been in Puerto Rico. We were, it was super nice. I was once on the beach, no, twice. Once with a friend just to, do, to have a swim and the second time to cook varnish in the evening. And the rest we were inside with uh, other makers from worldwide and uh, having all our speeches and all these things about violin varnish. It was really interesting. It would be nice to go to Puerto Rico again. <laughs> Hope you're doing fine over there. Frenchman. Is the string length bridge placement different on a 1717 Strat and the Guarnieri model? Also, what is the minimum heat for the bridge for the lowest string action? So this, the, 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 the bridge position on nowadays instruments is always the same. On the old masters, probably I imagine that sometimes it's a little bit all a little bit shorter. Um, especially Guarnieri's. Uh, are smaller and um, could be that it's a little bit smaller than the, the vibrating uh, string lengths, but we're talking about maybe one millimeter or something. Um, the minimum uh, heath for the bridge is a very good question because for me, the minimum of an E string would be 3.8 millimeters. But uh, how I explained already in other videos about string heath, uh, it depends on on the, the the personal taste. You know, some people want uh, uh, a red car and others want it black. You know, um, and here it is a question of especially beginners don't want to squeeze the string so much. And the more you are professional, there, the more you will like it higher. I just have a lot of friends of mine in uh, in Austria, Vienna Philharmonie, and they have the E string five, even more more or less similar heat than on the G-string and they like it because they say that they can go into it a little bit more but you have to imagine that they are playing like six eight hours a day and for them pressing a little bit more is not a problem they have so much power in their fingers that this is not a problem uh, this really depends uh, I, I like to make it around four the E string and 5.5, 6 millimeters on the G string, and then I still have plenty of material to adjust it to the um, to the taste of my customers. Bosco, thanks again, much appreciated. Thank you for your time and all for your experience you've shared through YouTube channel. You're welcome. I love to do so, and I'm happy that you're happy. Martin, hi Edgar, hi. Ron Teplitz, could a Belgian bridge on a cello increase wolf tone and slow response on the G-string? Um, now, we are, we, are, we are now talking increasing means that it is um, avoiding the wolf tone. Uh, hmm, this is a good question. I think it is, yes, it is increasing the response over all the sound and all the strings. And my 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 uh, uh, my impression is that it's also a little bit increasing the wolf tone. But actually, the wolf tone is not by the um, caused by the bridge, but it's actually caused by the top of the instrument. So 
uh, if the bridge feeds have the same think um, measurement of a Belgium and a French bridge, it should be the same wolf tone. It might be that the, the Belgian bridge is so raw somehow, very focused to the found that it is amplifying a little bit more this this sound and also the the, um, the wolf tone, but the wolf tone is is there and is 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 in a different area underneath the f hole and should be detected and then blocked. And you can also block it by the springs behind the bridge towards the tailpiece. But this is actually the reason. So I uh, it doesn't wouldn't doesn't make any uh, too much sense for me. Okay. Very good. So this is here uh, probably one of the best uh, live transmissions. So I think very efficient. I didn't imagine that there are so many people here checking on this here. I actually thought that we'll make only half an hour here and we're close to one hour. Here's one more question. Uh, send me your questions because otherwise I'm shutting down. So violin play piano. Do you use same bridge model for low neck violin and how hard position affects sound? No, I, I exactly understand what you're asking. Uh, on one side, the lower the bridge is, lower in heath altogether, the less angle is on the string and the better it sounds. On the other side, there should be all the diagram which I showed you last time about the instrument that if the, if everything is idle and the bridge is as high as the ribs or the two archings together, so it's one third, one third, and the two archings is another third, then all and the, the spring starts on the same surface where the top is glued on the ribs, then all the diagrams of the forces of an instrument are going to be zero, okay? So we somehow have to stick a little bit on that system in order that all the forces are completing and going to zero. And then the instrument can age very healthy and graceful. So, uh, well, a lower bridge, certainly, if now you, you, you don't just cut out neck, like crazy everywhere and, and we know that nothing is idle like uh, your girlfriend or your wife or whatever or even your kids nobody is perfect here and you don't want to modify everything to perfection at a certain point you have to understand that some things are especially because they're not so perfect as me as well that's why I'm so great, right? And same thing is with your violin. It could be that your instrument is sounding super great and people just can identify you because of your great sound. So then you just leave the neck how it is, even if the neck angle is too low and you have to put a lower bridge. So certainly for a lower bridge, what do you need? There is what, what is in the highest area, the heart. And there is the heart high, middle, low. And you, when you buy a new bridge, a raw bridge to fit on a violin, you have to know which one you want to use in order to make a nice bridge for that violin, okay? So that's the reason why they sell bridges in different sizes, because the bass bar is somewhere here and somewhere there, and not everybody is making the instruments like Edgar. And on the other side, the neck angle is always not always the same, uh, the same so you have to adjust a little bit. So you need, if you have a, a repair shop, then you have a lot of bridges and you have certainly uh, bridges with a high heart, middle or low. And on the cello even is the difference even more than this. So this is why I, 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 you have to adjust and you have to measure and to, to decide what kind of bridge are you going to put on your, on your instrument. And if you have a low bridge, it certainly is sound wise, it's, it's not so bad. It's a very, great vibrating sound yeah so you want on one side you want a lower bridge on the other side you want to have everything correct so it's always a little bit um hello love your show trying to figure out why my g-spring is vibrating making zzz sounds can find anything loose thinking maybe it's the string to close to fingerboard. This is very likely. If you just name it already, then very Benny Königsberg, um, then I think it might be this. Yeah. So um, 
one thing could be if you're now in quarantine and you want to continue to playing, it's probably very likely in the very first positions, then you could just um, lose the swing and put a small piece of paper or even two pieces of paper under the string on the upper nut. So you raise it a little bit like this. And the same thing you could also do on the bridge, just to raise it a little bit. Yeah, it's not very nice, huh? but for another one or two weeks, you can do this like this. And then later on, you get the, uh, the, the, the upper nut uh, adjusted, the sound, the, the fingerboard maybe a little bit uh, adjusted and, uh, and uh, parchment under the G string or a new bridge or whatever. Okay. Daniel Roman, thank you for that diagram. I did not see that one. Very interesting. Thanks. Uh, this is a masterclass. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it is certainly a masterclass because I'm here the master. Hi, dear master. Would you kindly speak about the width of the feet of the bridge? Um, yes, the feet, uh, when they come raw, how, how um, the width like this, you mean, or the width like this because the the model the the, the raw bridge is quite of uh, effect of measuring because you certainly you cannot just throw on every violin just the violin bridge but you have to measure where's the sound uh, the bass bar underneath and once you get this position, usually I, I sign it, I put, uh, post it, the sticky part of the post it on the top. And then I draw my lines and then I figure out where's the base part. Then I sign it and then I go 1.2 millimeters out. And then I go to the other side. I, I calculate that it's centered and everything. And then I get the distance and it could be 43 millimeters, like it could be 39.5, you know, and then. I am going to search my bridge or I, I, I adjust a larger bridge in a very equal part in order that it is uh, symmetric. And then I adjust my feet in order that it is straight and that it doesn't go on one side or another. And then I adjust exactly the strings and everything. So it's, it's a pretty um, tricky thing and it has to be um, I'm chosen very careful. Yamali, and then the, the feet itself on a violin, I would see 11.5, even 11 millimeters, and you always cut from the inside, exactly, on a viola it's 12.5, on a cello it's uh, 23, 22.5, 23 is pretty good. Some makers, even very famous ones, don't care anything about this. I care a lot. But it's, it's up to you. Um, ba, 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 ba. And on a ch on a double bass, I make 40, 42 millimeters. Uh, Frenchman, I have been quarantined with my Strat copy and the Guarnieri copy with an awful bridge and been carving a couple of Aubert bridges myself. <laughs> this is good. I have even more respect for luthiers now. <laughs> It, it's really a lot of work. Okay? It's because in the beginning, when you get the bridge like this, you just think oh, it's, it's already done. You, you just have to put it on. And then when you start making it, you realize how much things have to be done. Yeah? And then even the thickness of the feet, which is 4.2. And then you have to get it away. And when you need your arching, you have to be slightly arching on the back side, a little bit more on the front side. It has to look thin, but it has to be compact without uh, taking away the stability of everything, so it's a nice, interesting thing. Very good. I think this was very nice. Thank you for... for participating. I think this was a very nice transmission. Thank you all. And uh, I will be online next Monday with questions answered a little bit more generally. And then next week, I hope that the internet continues working like this. And then I will fit that it can turn my camera a little bit. And uh, we will talk about something else. I think a, a good question for next week for musicians on Thursday would be um, fingerboard and um, upper nut. That would be something I think we can just generally take this subject and then we talk about that. Okay. See you on Monday, two o'clock. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend.
fine.